that's real positive indication of his comeback. And the one from Jamal Johnson, a clean shot. Fred Reed second and short. And oh just tripped up by Jawan Simpson, or else he'd still be running. But another first down for Winnipeg. A little delay on the Fred Reed running play out of shotgun here, and he just stumbles up a little bit, or he is in a foot race to the end zone. You're right, shoestring tackle by Jawan Simpson. Fred with 34 yards has passed Dave Ramey on the all-time rushing list, now number six in Bomber history. And this time, not going anywhere, dumped by Justin Phillips. Just a quick thought for the old-timers, Glenn. Yep. Guys older than you, guys like old as me, Dave <laughs> Ramey could play. <laughs> I remember the name. <laughs> in fact, he was a two-way guy, ended up being a terrific defensive back in Toronto as well but Fred Reed has passed him on the all-time list and is closing in on 4,000 yards early in his fifth season with the Bombers second and 15 Pierce he got an this. gets a block gets outside and he'll be drilled up by Justin Phillips and again a flag down in the Bomber backfield I think this one goes against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. To play in the passing game extends like this. Oftentimes it's a holding up front. Buck Pierce was well short of first down territory on the run. Paul Lapolis talked about settling for threes too much. And he wanted to start capitalizing on some of the field position that he's experienced. Positive field position in the first couple of weeks and, and into this game. Snaps might have a choice here. Usually you decline, but they're in field goal range. The field goal might move them out of field goal range, but give Winnipeg another play. So oh, it is a decision. Winnipeg number 60. 10-yard penalty remains second down. Abi Khan called for holding, and they are going to push him back, and that means it would be a 52-yard field goal, but it also gives Winnipeg a chance to extend the drive. Eight-year veteran Abi Khan in the middle is playing against Adrian Davis on this play, and he's he's fine for what should be the regular duration of a passing play, but as it extends, he grabs the jersey, and Adrian Davis can't get loose, and that's the holding call, and they all pushing him back. Adrian Davis, the only down lineman for John Reed, second in the box, underneath the goes, crosser for Watson. Takes a heavy hit from Johnny Dixon, but gets it back into field goal range at the Calgary 31. Dixon in on the corner for Greg Fawcett this week for Calgary. A big hit at the end of it, and, and a, a play where the Calgary Stampeder secondary took away the deep threats. They weren't going to give up second and that many to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, so the Bombers took what they could, which was the underneath throw to Watson and a field goal opportunity. And Brandon Isaac's been shaken up. The Sam linebacker. And he is up and on his way to the Calgary bench and Justin Pilardi in the field goal unit coming on for the Bombers. Pilardi, who missed his first two last week, <laughs> heard some boos. Yes, he did. Are we going to blame it on the holder, Javon Johnson, who uh, was holding for the first time? Well, they always do, don't they? Yep. <laughs> but after that, he got back into form. And he's off to a good start. I mean, he's, he's hit on six of eight, just missed those first two. Hit four last week. And this will be from 38. And a block. First field goal block this season. The Bombers have had a punt blocked, and now Pilardi's first attempt of the night goes awry. Well, the Calgary Stampeders loaded up the left side of the formation. I believe it was Johnny Dixon that might have got there. Number 27 for the Calgary Stampeders. And they're coming off the edge. They're loading it up. And, and Johnny Dixon really gets the corner here from that left edge. No yards. Winnipeg number 47. It's a 15 yard penalty. First down.
timing looked good. The hold was there by Javon Johnson, but you just can't allow a player like Johnny Dixon with that kind of quickness a clear shot right off the edge. He was the guy in the two-point stance and got there in a hurry. Brandon Stewart's got to get a little more of a push on him. So the Bombers come away empty after the turnover by Calgary last week. Five stamp turnovers in BC only generated three points off those turnovers. There's a former Winnipeg Blue Bomber, Robbie Bryant, with his first catch of the night. This six catch is off to a little bit of a slower start than a year ago for Romby Bryant. Of course, last year with his 15 touchdowns, it was a pretty awesome year for Romby Bryant, number 83, and he's just been a little bit longer getting on the same page with Henry Burris this year. He's not have a touchdown yet. Burris missed him a couple of times deep in the opening game of the year against the Argos, second. And a couple, Joffrey Reynolds. 50-yard line, he'll have the first down. Well, will he be as easy to stop as Corey Boyd was? Boyd, 7 for 14 last week, and Odell Willis, but they do a better job on Reynolds. And you know Calgary made note of that comment. Yeah, some uh, borderline trash talking from Od Odell Willis yesterday at the walkthrough as he compared playing against Corey Boyd of the Argos and Joffrey Reynolds. Well, this time they think to Reynolds and pressure on the Down back in his 36. Doug Brown, Kenny Maynard. Put on the heat and Burris goes down. And it's another sack, the 10th of the year for the blue chip defense here in Winnipeg. Well, Kenny Maynard is getting a chance to play in a here and what the Bombers are going to do is have Clinton Kent take contain so he has no responsibility outside and can shoot the gap inside. Catches that offensive line and slide protection. He comes right off the edge in it. Inside pass rush and nowhere to go for Henry Burris. Final play of the quarter. And down the field. It's not What a break on the ball from Jonathan Hefty. Intended for Robbie Bryant to look open for a moment. Well, we talked about good defense. We had plenty of it in the opening quarter. Here are the numbers after 15 minutes. If you're a Calgary fan, you're saying, yeah, we've started slow in our first two games. And if you're a Bomber fan, you're saying that's the kind of defense that uh, we like and we're getting used to. Yeah, just 22 net yards for Calgary. You know, when I asked Doug Brown yesterday about that defense, he said, well, the one thing we have to do, we have a young group that's aggressive, but we have to be consistent. Well, they've taken the two games of momentum and they've moved it into that first quarter. They played great. Well, you heard uh, Milton Matt say they're in. Schultz was hesitant about whether or not he sold on Winnipeg, but that, that 15 minutes might help convince him I, I, because I think everybody wanted to see what they do against a high-powered offense, and for 15 minutes, that was impressive. Well, the defense still looks great, but now the offense has got to catch up. Buck Pierce has got that time of possession advantage, but they keep on first down. They take those losses. They get themselves in second and more than 10. So first down production, even if you're throwing the football away for Winnipeg, is going to help their offense tremendously. Burke Dales boots it away. And uh, no yards penalty will be called here as Javon Johnson fielded the punt. And if you joined us late, the biggest play of that first quarter wiped out by penalty, a Javon Johnson 87-yard punt return for a touchdown taken off the board. No yards. Calgary, number 80. 15-yard penalty, first down. Shawnee Forzani, and here is Sean Churchill. Thank you very much, Chris. There is a lot of optimism in Winnipeg, not only because the team is 2-0, but because they sold more than 21,000 season tickets in the offseason. That is a brand-new mark for the franchise. Not bad for a team that was 4-14 four and 14 a year ago and missed the playoffs. Part of the excitement is the brand-new stadium going up at the University of Manitoba. That'll be the home of the Blue Bombers starting 2012. So come November, we close the doors on 58 years of legendary football here at Canadian Stadium. Guys? Pierce here, and he'll stop him and hit the deck in the nick of time in front of the safety, Eric Fraser, close to a first down. And 
but Pierce has got to do that. Yeah, you know, when you talk about what Sean was mentioning, you, you feel the excitement in Winnipeg this year and a team that has figured out a way to win those close games early on in this season. This will be the last trip to this stadium for the Calgary Stampeders, and Dave Dickinson remembers back. He has some fond memories here back to the 98 Grey Cup when he was the backup quarterback against the Hamilton Tiger Cats, played that Grey Cup here. Jeff Garcia was the starter, and guess who the third team quarterback was on that team? Daniel Burris. Yep. And again, because the holder is so important, Dave Dickinson, a holder on a Grey Cup winning play here. Yeah, so they were reminiscing a little bit about that 98 Grey Cup, because it is the last time Calgary will play here at Canada Stadium or Winnipeg Stadium back then, and he said he threw one pass in that game that was dropped by Calvin Anderson on a fake field goal, and he thought, I've got to get back to a Grey Cup because I don't want to be 0-1 career in Grey Cup games because of that drop, but he was the holder on the McLaughlin field goal. And then came back in 06 and completed a whole bunch in a BC Lion Grey Cup victory. Yes, sir. Here in Winnipeg. First down after the short yardage team came in with Alex Brink, but Pierce back to work and he's going to throw again and he's going to take a little more punishment. But this is what I talked about at the end of the first quarter. The, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers moving the ball pretty well and then they'll get into a first down about this positive part of the field for them and then take a loss. That time Buck quickly recognized it. They've made the adjustments. Now he's going to run a little bit more. He's done it on this series twice and just get even one yard positive to give him a manageable situation on second down and not second and 15 or more. Got the two leading rushing quarterbacks in the early season here. Henry Burris is number one, Buck Pierce is second. Second and nine here, rolling out. Hughes to the back side with pressure on that ball. Late hit. Knocked away by Brandon Isaac. And another late hit on Buck Pierce. The pass was intended for Clarence Denmark. Second time he's been real slow to get up and this time limping noticeably and that was late as well. Major foul, roughing a pass, sir. Calgary, number 46, 15 yards, automatic first down. Robert McCune, who had a clean shot on Travis Lule last week. The question you've got to ask, and I know Calgary fans are wondering, is Robert McCune, could he have pulled off and, and avoided that contact once the ball is gone? And if the answer to that question is yes, he could have veered away and avoided the hit, then that flag will be thrown every single time. So the Bombers with a first down at the 32. Back to 32. And he has dropped Fred Reed at the 26-yard line. Jamie Berize has talked to Buck Pierce about being Buck, meaning if you see the run and, and, the, and the, an opening to go ahead and take off, do what you do. But be more careful to hook slide, and he's done that this year. Those were two late hits that rattled Buck in this game a little bit. Five for Reed, who's had 87 and 63 yard games so far this season. Second and five. Buck stands in over the middle. Terrence Jeffers Harris. And now the ruling incomplete. Some of the bombers waving to Paul LaPolice to challenge this call. Let's take another look. Well, Buck Pierce has got a little bit of pressure coming from the outside. That time, Justin Phillips does a nice job of not making contact and drawing a penalty when he sees the ball gone. And now it was a question of whether or not that was caught at the other end. Trapped it against his leg in the field and looks like a pretty good call. Hard to tell if he had control from that angle because he's blocking the the football. It certainly doesn't look like he has it at the bottom. It was whether or not he had control early, took a step or two, and then lost control as he went to the ground. So I think that's what Paul Lapolice wants to take a look at. Did he catch it? Winnipeg is challenging the rule on the field of any complete pass. Did he catch it, take a step or two, and then start to lose control and 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 a <laughs> There's Henry Burris back to work and open.
open man. R.J. Franklin's got a catch and brought down by Javon Johnson. She said Doug Brown right away, and then she forgot. She said, well, maybe you should mention my my dad yeah. first and then Doug Brown second. But And Andy wanted us to say hi to Kelly and Eddie and Attawapastak Good job. on James Bay watching the game tonight. They work for Eddie, but uh, great fan, or work for Andy. Great fans. And the season, season ticket people. holders, yep. Yeah. Up there in row U. And he stumped us with a little trivia that we might get to later. Short yarders, Michael Bishop stood up and then roared for about 10 when it looked like he almost didn't get the initial first down. Well, he never did go down, I don't believe, but you know what this does? This opens up the door. If a quarterback is going to go into the back of a pile like that and then decide to just spin out of there and continue on, he's going to take a lot more hits the next time. I guarantee the Bombers will make sure he's down on the next short yardage play. A good pickup and awareness from Michael Bishop. We hear Drew Tate will be throwing the football starting Monday. Bishop. Brought in to replace him first. Kenyon Hamble will catch. And another Calgary first down into Bomber territory at the Winnipeg 40. And you know, Joe Lobendon is, is the middle linebacker in charge of, of tracking Joffrey Reynolds here. And even though the fake wasn't real smooth, Lobendon right here gets a little tight and then doesn't get underneath the throw in his drop, number 58, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's going to look at that run first. Then he's a little bit shallow on the drop over the middle. First and ten. And Hall in and out of the hands of Rambo. Who was out of the lineup last week with a hamstring problem after seven catches against Toronto in week one. I, I mentioned that I'd had a good conversation with Doug Brown, who has said at the beginning of the season that this will be his last year. And when you take a look at the interior defensive lineman stars of the past, only John Helton has been honored as a most all as an all-Canadian more than Doug Brown in the period of the defensive line was also the outstanding Canadian in 2001. And that jersey already in tatters. Up against 